Coming up to nine minutes past eight, well, our next guest is as controversial as she is revealing. Holly Hill found herself dumped by the love of her life, and to get back on track, she placed an ad for a sugar daddy. And Holly has written a book about what happened next, she and was. she joins us now. That's a, that's a heck of a book you've written, Holly. Thank you. Can we go back to why an attractive 35-year-old woman would need to place an ad for a sugar daddy? Well, I'd been working professionally um, for many years, um, five of which it was in psychology, and I met a, a had a wealthy boyfriend and uh, really quit my job at the request of him, really. He requested that um, um, I'd be more available to him, and so I, g I gave up my work on, on his behalf, really. And then he dumped you? Yes, yes. A wealthy boyfriend who was married? <laughs> yeah, well, he separated from his wife during our relationship, and they were very unhappy in their marriage, but um, yes, essentially, yeah. Tell us the ad that you placed. Well, it was uh, a friend actually suggested it. You know, he said to me, Holly, you know, you're a professional, you're a psychologist, you're well spoken, you're attractive, you know, you like cooking and, you know, hosting people. Why don't you become a kept woman? And I was a bit shocked at first, you know, and it almost cost the friendship, really. And then I thought about it afterwards and I thought, well, it's true multi dimensional employment, if you like to look at it that way. So you placed the ad, were you surprised by the number of responses you got and what sort of men respond to an ad looking for a sugar daddy? It was extraordinary. Um, I uh, got 11,000 hits and I so ended up, yeah, hits on the internet, <laughs> yep. And I uh, ended up uh, screening 100 men for the position and there were three main types of, of men. There were young men that didn't have enough time to find a, boy, a girlfriend. Right. There were uh, middle-aged men who had children and marriages and their wives were too tired or busy for sex. And there were older men that uh, had arrangements with their wives whose wives turned the other way. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what you said in the ad? Do you remember specifically? Oh, ab yeah, absolutely. It's it, quite long, but give us, give us the, the it nub was of it. something along the lines of professional, well-spoken, um, attractive woman seeks sugar daddy. I'm looking for exclusivity, only one person. Um, I'll be theoretically available to you 24-7. Yeah. So you were with John, your original sugar yep. daddy who, who dumped you. you. You met him and were, were, were in love with him, right? Yes, absolutely. Was there a decision that you were now becoming a prostitute? Um, I didn't identify as a prostitute at first, to be honest, because I looked it up in the dictionary and one of the requirements was promiscuity. And uh, all of the dictionary definitions said, you know, promiscuous, promiscuous. So I thought, I'm being faithful to a single man, and so I didn't identify with that at first. But then, when I realised that, you know, a, a sex worker makes people feel wonderful about themselves and gives them pleasure, and that's demonised when something like a dentist makes people feel miserable, and that's glorified, it was ridiculous. And so I'm quite happy to wear that tag if people want to, you know, apply it to me. Big cheerio to all the dentists watching the show. <laughs> One of the things that you talked about when you placed the ad was how important discretion was. You know, you even talked about, you know, you have garaging at your unit block where people could park their cars yeah. and the, the cars wouldn't be seen by anybody. So discretion is obviously very important. You must have found yourself in conversations with married men who really opened up to you about what it is that was wrong with their marriage. Yeah. Is there a general rule about why men turn away from their wives seeking sex with other women? I think we have to realise that we haven't managed to transcend our biology. You know, every statistic, every scientist in the world proves the fact of Darwin's, you know, women want to nest and men want to unnest, if you like. And it's the unnesting component. A man will help a woman nest. He'll, you know, look after the house. But if, a, you know, if the woman has turned away from that area of their life, she needs to help him unnest, you know, whether it might mean to go down to um, a magazine shop and get some dirty magazines or some movies. But we do have to cater to the men in our lives unnesting. Isn't that a massive generalisation? Um, I suspect if you ask most men, they will agree with me. And, you know, when you screen a hundred men and when you have a hundred men saying exactly the same thing... But these are a hundred men who've answered an ad. Well, I also have the privilege of having a lot of gay friends. And uh, when you have good friends, you have a good life. 
and uh, they have been very open to me as well. And um, to be honest, I haven't found a single man that has disagreed with what I'm propositioning. Just fin completing the story of your book, you, you select some men to meet and yeah. then you selected a sugar daddy. Yeah, absolutely. What did yeah. he pay you? He paid me $1,000 a week. And the interesting thing was, it was for mostly for 15 minutes of conversation between his meetings. I'd put a beautiful afternoon tea on, he would rush out between meetings, sit with me, kind of vent, and then he would leave. Nothing else? No. So there was no sex involved? There was some, but very little. Do you have a sugar daddy? Extraordinarily little. <laughs> Do you have a sugar daddy at the moment? No, no. And yeah. are you in a relationship at the moment? Um, no, but I, when you uh, know where a man's head's at, you get a lot of offers. Right. And you're knocking them back by yes. the sounds of things. Okay. Yeah. So I it sounds like you're else. off men then? Um, no, not absolutely not. But this is something uh, you know I had to do by myself, and uh, I don't think it'd be fair to have a partner going through this at the moment. Yeah. Okay, well, Holly, it is a fascinating read. Thank you. We've Good. both discovered. <laughs> Gave us something to talk about this morning when we came to work. The book is called Sugar Babe, and uh, thanks again to Holly for coming in and chatting thanks, to Holly. us about it this morning. It is uh, quarter past eight, eight fifteen.